this Chickshaw bill is the biggest project I've ever done. I've never built anything like this. So now we're on to cutting our hoer cloth and our one inch mesh that will be the flooring of our chickshaw. So your measurement for this is two foot by six foot. You need three pieces. Save this. You never know when you might need something like this. This will come in handy down the road somewhere along your homesteading venture. We got our handle, we measure this out at five foot. I got everything laid out. I have to use tables for the time being to keep everything semi-flat since we really don't have any flat ground here. Now we're about to install the two five nine pieces that you see right here. They come in 15 inches from outside the frame, center it. Went ahead and used my square when I measured. That way it gets centered properly. Then after that, we will install our corner braces. What I'm doing here is installing four corner braces. I drilled pilot holes for each corner brace and I also use my square to square up each corner brace. That way I can maximize the depth of my screw. What I'm doing now before I staple down the one inch wire mesh, I'm going to mark my purchase. You measure out every foot and then you center your purchase on each of the uh, one foot marks. The next step after assembling your floor, you install your two foot by six foot one inch mesh. I've already got two pieces stapled on using three quarter inch staples. About to do the last piece now. Now with this, I did cut my pieces a little bit bigger than the instructions called for just to give myself room for error. Now we're ready to install our two by two perches. Place them at your one foot markers coming across. You'll be installing five of them. If you're wondering what I'm wearing, my wife got me this last Christmas as a gift. It's called Magnaflex. I will leave a link below down in the description to Amazon. This thing here is awesome. It has nine magnets in it. It holds screws, washers, staples, you name it. That way you're not dropping stuff on the ground that can cause flat tires, especially if your workspace is in your driveway like mine. So let's go ahead and let's get these perches on our floor. Magnaflex, buy one today. We got two perches done, three more to go. Time lapse time. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Now, Caroline and myself, we're about to flip this over so we can staple the one inch mesh to the bottom of these perches. I can't reach. You can't reach? I can't reach. What are we gonna do? We finally figured out a way to turn over the six foot by six foot floor. I tell you, it's heavy. So we're on to the next step of the chickshaw build. We are assembling our corner pieces. All this is is a two by four by two. I gotta be mindful where I put my screws because I don't want them to intersect once when I start screwing in this wood to wood brace. 
Magnaflex. <sighs> Next up, we're gonna install the galvanized bracing. Each post gets two of them. When you're installing your post, you wanna make sure the five inch side faces out, both in the rear and in the front of the chickshaw. So when putting your corner post on, you wanna make sure you're flush on both sides. Now the one inch mesh will throw you off a little bit. Now we're on to the next step. We are installing four wood to wood braces on each of the corner posts. You wanna make sure you straddle where the corner posts meet the bottom frame. It's pretty simple, easy to do. And I used one and five eighths inch screws for installing the wood to wood braces. It is a cold one out this morning, 32 degrees out. We got some heavy frost, but we gotta keep on going. So here's what we did yesterday. We got the front bracing up on the front. We framed in the tops, as you can see here. We framed in the sides with the bracing. Back here in the back, we did a partial frame in for the nesting boxes. We got our nesting box frame and without any hiccups instead of installing these first i went ahead and installed this first next up you gotta cut your holes in your crates it's really simple now we have one other chick shot we picked up off of facebook marketplace and i noticed something with the milk crates when we're getting eggs or the chickens are climbing in and out of them and I will show you what modification I did. Now the modification I did was I added another two by two. If I would have just left it as is per the instructions, the crates would just be resting on the lips as you can see back there and up here. All it would take to knock it off would be a chicken just bumping up against it and it'd be all crooked, which I see that in our chick shawl that's out in pasture now. So now my crates are nice and stable. The landing bar was quite simple. We got that installed and that would go up like so and it would latch. In the morning times you would have it down, chickens would jump up, do 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 do, and climb into the crate and lay their eggs. Come about three to four o'clock before they turn in for the evening. You wanna come out if you want to. Lena bar goes up, you latch it so that way come nighttime they can't sleep in their nesting boxes and poop in your bed shavings or straw we also got the free choice mineral feeder installed it's a two by two right here that comes across toe nailed it in right here and then screwed it into this brace when you're cutting your milk crates it's really simple you'll see a pattern here arches up top you just follow that Cut it out. Today we need to get these wheels on, get the axles onto the frame. Ran into a mishap. This right here, this is just soft set. This is the, uh, the framing for the handle. That is the correct cut. I don't know what I was thinking. This right here is not the correct cut. So I gotta recut another piece. This piece I just did. We got it that time. So we need to get the axles installed onto the frame. Already measured in three foot, centered it. Same with this side. Now we got our wheels on. Now on to the handle. Nice and level. At the step now where we are putting on the hardware cloth on the sides normally you would want to wear gloves when working with hardware cloth 
the edges can be quite sharp where you've made your cuts. So Caroline gave me a hand today. She hand washed the panels. We got that installed today. We used bolts instead of the screws that these hinges come with. Of course, back here, we used the inch and five eight screws. But if you go to use screws, oh, hello, dumpling. If you go to use bolts, use the flat head, not the round head. Cause if you use the round head, this door won't close all the way. So we're installing the handle. Instead of screws, I went with carriage bolts, some washers and nuts, three on each side. I should have done four on each side, but I can add the fourth later. I'm gonna cut the access off. Same with the access here for the door, since we went with bolts. So let's go ahead and finish drilling this out right here, and let's install our handle. Now we're ready to drill the holes for the locking pins. Just like so. Look at that. So now we're at the stage where we can put our corner braces on our roof frame. Two go in the back here. They're two by two by 12 inch. But in the front, it didn't call for any corner braces, but I went ahead and cut longer braces for the front to give the front stability also. Much better. It's not as wobbly in the front as it was before the bracing. If I had enough two by twos, I'd probably do some bracing in the middle section as well, but this will be sufficient enough. I like it. So now we're ready to screw on the corrugated vinyl roofing. The Chickshaw project is complete. I am so happy. My confidence level is sky high now. To be honest, going into this project, my confidence level was really low. I'm not a skilled carpenter. The Chickshaw looks amazing. I'm super proud of myself. What do you think, Dumplin? to pass your inspection. Thank you for watching this vlog. If I can build a Chickshaw, so can you. No matter your experience, have a good day or a good night. Stay safe and God bless and see you all next time. Take care.